Chapter 14 About a dozen or so guardians remained on the street to stake out the perimeter, while another group made their way up the staircase to Mara's old apartment. Inside the apartment, Alex could not believe her eyes. She stared at her screen for a moment to make sure the object she was seeing was real. There's only one way to find out. Flashlight! She commanded. A dense beam of light shone from the end of her access pod as she knelt down on the floorboard and began searching for a loose screw or an edge to pry up. After an anxious analysis, she discovered a notch in the wood large enough to wedge her finger in. She lifted up the plank and set it aside. She held out her arm and aimed it into the hole. The light illuminated the tiny alcove in the floor and caressed a small wooden box. Alex wasted no time before reaching in with both hands and hauling the lost treasure to the surface. The box was covered with a thick layer of dust, but was otherwise in good shape. She blew off the top layer of dust and wiped the residual bits with her arm. She laid the box down on the floor in front of her and examined it carefully. There was nothing particularly unusual about it. There were no markings or labels to indicate who it belonged to or what it was for. Whatever was inside, though, had to be important enough to be hidden in the floor. Alex slowly opened the lid and saw what had been hiding all those years. She perused the contents briefly, but before she fully comprehended what she had inadvertently uncovered, there was a loud crash from the other room that startled her. Following that, a stampede of footsteps echoed throughout the apartment, striking fear into her heart. Alex panicked and quickly sealed up the contents in the box and placed everything back in the floor. She slid the plank over to cover it up as the bedroom door was kicked off its hinges. By the time she rose to her feet, the guardians were already funneling in through the bedroom door. You! Hold it right there! Alex ran toward the window, pried it open and slipped through out onto the platform. The irony of the escape crossed her mind, but only for a second. She descended down the emergency staircase, as her mother had once done, 20 years prior. But that's where the similarities ended. Once Alex made it to the street, she was surrounded by dozens of guardians. She had no choice but to surrender. A swarm of guardians surrounded her and bound her arms behind her back. She was placed in the back of a guardian transport vehicle and taken away to prison. About an hour or so after Milo had written the note, Eris received a knock on his door. For a split second, he thought it might be Alex looking to stay the night with him. He approached the door and looked at the video monitor, but did not recognize the person standing on the other side. It was a young man who did not look too threatening, so Eris opened the door. Can I help you? He asked. Is your name Eris? Who wants to know? The young messenger handed Eris a piece of cloth and then walked away without saying another word. Eris closed the door and slowly walked back to his room. He unraveled the cloth and read the message. Big Brother is watching me. Make sure our friend is safe. A concerning thought entered Eris's mind as he read the message. If Milo went to the trouble to write this note and have some kid deliver it, Alex must be in danger. He wasted no time leaving his apartment. He rushed to the tram and boarded it just before it took off. Ordinarily, he thought the tram was fast, but not that night. Come on, come on, come on. He mumbled to himself impatiently. When the tram eventually reached the ground floor, Eris sprinted out before the doors had fully opened. He darted across the main lobby and found a dormant taxi. As soon as he hopped in, the automated driver greeted him and asked him for his desired destination. <laughs> Ferndale and Willow! He shouted as he panted for breath. I'm sorry. Please repeat the name of the destination. The robotic voice said. Eris's frustration mounted. He gave the command again, this time slowly and clearly. Ferndale and Willow. The automated driver understood the request and the vehicle started to move. The neighborhood where Alex was staying was on the other side of town, which was at least an hour away. Eris took a few deep breaths to calm himself down, then reclined his seat to get comfortable for the long ride. The chair slowly reclined all the way, allowing Eris to fully stretch out. The bright lights of the city lit up the night sky and poured in through the cab. Eris adjusted a switch that limited the amount of light that penetrated the glass dome of the taxi, causing it to become dark. He took another deep breath, <sighs> closed his eyes, and dozed off. When the taxi arrived at the destination, the interior lights came on and woke Eris up. He adjusted the seat and tried to shake the cobwebs from his brain. 
It was only 10.30 p.m., but it felt like he had been asleep for hours. Eris stepped out of the vehicle under the dim glow of a streetlight. He looked up and down the barren streets and did not see a single person or parked car in sight. There was something unsettling about being in a neighborhood that was completely abandoned, especially in a city with a population of over 10 million. Rows of deteriorating buildings that were once the homes of thousands of people now stood vacant. It was the ugly secret that nearly everyone tried to ignore. These neighborhoods were the scars left over from the Third World War and still had not fully healed. They stood as a reminder to anyone adventurous enough to travel to them that the world was not always so perfect. Amidst the burnt-down confectionaries, crumbling streets, and buildings with boarded-up windows was the place Alex was staying. Eris made his way to the back alley and up the fire escape ladder. When he reached the second-level apartment, he called out for Alex, but there was no response. Flashlight, he said as he pointed his arm in the room. He was overwhelmed with trepidation as he discovered he was too late. The first thing he noticed was the bedroom door broken off its hinges. It was now laying a few feet from the doorframe. The bedroom window was already open, so he squeezed through. He aimed his light to the ground and saw the dirty tread marks of size 12 boots decorating the floor. He followed the footprints outside the bedroom all the way to the entrance of the apartment. Much like the bedroom, the front door had also been dislodged and was now lying on the floor near the kitchen. Eris studied the doorframe and observed black burn marks and the distinct odor of C4 explosives clear evidence of a recent blast. Eris deduced the Guardians had come for Alex, but it was not clear if they were successful. Eris retracted the footprints back into the bedroom. He could see Alex's little footprints in the dust on the floor. It appeared as though she had managed to escape out the window, but whatever happened after that was still unclear. Eris walked over to the window and looked out, foolishly hoping to see her below. He turned around and began to collect her belongings. It was at that moment that something peculiar caught his eye. There was an intriguing pattern in the dust around one specific area on the floor. It was apparent that the center part of the floor had seen a lot of action recently. He could even identify one of Alex's handprints. She was definitely doing something down here, he thought. Eris squatted down for a closer look and shone his light around the area. Ordinarily, he would not have thought anything of it, but the unusual pattern in the dust aroused his suspicion. He examined the floorboards and discovered that one of the boards had a small notch in it, just wide enough to wedge a small object in it. He squeezed one of his fingers in, lifted up the floorboard and set it aside. Much to his surprise, he discovered a small wooden box. The dust on the lid had been recently disturbed, indicating Alex had discovered it earlier. Eris removed the box from the hole, slowly peeled it open and peered inside. With a furrowed brow, he studied the contents carefully. After a thorough analysis, it was clear he had discovered a secret he was not supposed to know. He looked around nervously as he now possessed something of great value and wanted to be wary of any lurking marauders. He gathered up everything that was in the box and put it in his satchel. He placed the empty box back in the hole and covered it up with the plank. Like a thief in the night, Eris snuck away undetected.